Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Living Life at Life View. I am your host, Dr. Veronica Garcia, and I am here joined today by an amazing and very loved faculty member at Life University, um, James Paul, but mostly known through the university as JP. Hi JP, how are you doing today? It's a good day. It's, it's a good Friday. <laughs> I love I love a good Friday. Coming off uh, the MLK holiday. Mm -hmm. um, Short it, week. It's 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 nice. It's nice. We'll get some more recovery over the weekend, I hope. And that's awesome. And JP, talk to us a little bit about what is your role in the university? Um, it's changed and flowed a bit. Mm -hmm. At this point, I'm an instructor in the sports health science department. Mm -hmm. um, also, many people call it the exercise science department. So in that role, I have a lot of our introductory courses, um, the health and wellness classes. A lot of people take as BOBO courses. Um, some of the fitness and wellness, um, like a strength training course to try mm -hmm. and make people a little bit more comfortable in what can be an intimidating environment or the weight room. Mm -hmm. But then I have 400 level students for our scientific principles of strength and conditioning. Wow. People who want to get certified and go into the field to help other people have higher performance outputs. So. Um, I teach some of the labs. That's fun. Yes, um, labs are always cool. It, it's a way to get hands on. Mm -hmm. And if we keep it interesting, then students oftentimes, they find a little bit more than they get out of a textbook. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what I do now. <laughs> I love it. I'm pretty How sure. How long have you been in the university? I just got my, my bowl celebrating my 10 year work anniversary. But my wife and I were going back and forth deliberating. She's like, you've been there way longer than that. <laughs> um, I think it was 2005, six that I came to the university. Okay. Um, my brother is a, a chiropractor as well, graduated early 90s. Mm -hmm. um, so spent some time with the rugby program here, went out and worked around Atlanta, um, mm -hmm. was blessed when I was going through the master's program. Dr. Faust reached out to me and brought me back as an instructor. So I'm guessing like first time working as an adjunct here was probably 2008 or so. Wow. So 2000, exactly. Yeah, something around there. That's but definitely who's counting? Time. How long, <laughs> what is 2023? Uh, 15, 15 years. Yeah, yeah, I think 15. <laughs> You're quick with math. <laughs> I am not quick, I just, I just have That to one worked. To, it, it had, exactly. It, it, that one worked. Um, talk to us about the exercise science uh, department. What are some of those um, programs within itself? What is it that, that people can expect from that department? Fair. Uh, it's led by some bosses. Okay. Uh, your instructors, they, they've done it. They're constantly either coaching their swimmers or they've won all American medals for throwing or for cross country running. Like, we have a active um, faculty there, mm -hmm. um, a group of people who have either done it or help other people do it currently. Mm -hmm. And with that, I think the lessons become real, um, whether it's someone who is a varsity soccer player here, right. and now they're teaching you kinesiology. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you have individuals with backgrounds in nutrition who are also teaching you physiology. Mm -hmm. um, and... and We've actually combined departments at this point. Okay. So nutrition and sports health science are under the same director, which is pretty cool because now we have the potent aspect of our nutrition department and matching that with the scientific based principles of how to train, how to recover. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we're doing some things with our positive psychology program because a sound mind within a sound body. So it's cool on this campus that we can work together. Mm -hmm. um, I've been encouraging a lot of our students to really entertain the idea of internships. Mm -hmm. So you get to feel and see the different work environments before you commit 100%. So that's, that's something that I think we're pushing a little bit um, more so now mm -hmm. than we made the effort towards. Uh, we understand that getting the job is, is a competitive thing to do. So right. let's put you in positions where other people can see how valuable you are mm -hmm. while you're still in school. Yeah, exactly. And that's a, that's a really good, um, I guess, 
pivot to 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 ask what are some of those careers that a person that graduates from a bachelor's in exercise science um, they can they can do they can perform they can work in. I think it has a bad rap. I think people think exercise science leads to personal training. Right. And there's nothing wrong with a a, a personal training certificate. Right. That as a career choice can be really, really financially rewarding right. and offer a lot of freedom for individuals. Mm -hmm. But if we look at the umbrella of exercise science, when we talk about things like chiropractic as a terminal degree program, mm -hmm. you look at psychology programs, once you understand how the body works, oftentimes it's way easier to understand the nervous system as well as the, the anatomy of the brain and how dopamine receptors work mm -hmm. and now we can try and attack behavior change from a mental as well as a physical standpoint um, some of the students that have recently graduated some of them have gone on to physical therapy school mm -hmm. proud of those individuals like they worked hard for that athletic training falls under our umbrella mm -hmm. um, whether it's high performance sport athletic training or if it's a workplace athletic training mm -hmm. that when I was going through undergrad, I had no idea exercise science was a thing. Mm. Came to the university here, was exposed to the master's program, bought in right away. This is what I was meant to do. I knew it. Yeah. And now to see all the different courses of action that you could take from a career standpoint. We've had students who go into um, podiatry. We've had students who go into... Uh, as a precursor for dentistry school. Um, uh, it, it runs a, a wide variety of career choices. That doesn't get into the biomechanists. It doesn't mm -hmm. get into people who are perhaps working with prosthetic. Um, some people are gonna have to have surgeries and our exercise science students can go into those operating rooms as a sales rep. They know how to use their devices and they lead the surgeons through the implementation. Um, I think exercise science is a good precursor to anything in the health science field. That's amazing. Yeah, it definitely, it can have its tracks of, of focus and development, but the the availability for a whole career in it is very wide. And it talks about the body, right, and how the body works. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble because... Oh. I didn't talk about the cardiorespiratory aspect <laughs> of it, um, the rehab and rehabilitation aspect. Yes. I mean... I think we could go into like 12 different spheres of careers based off of some of the lessons and the coursework that we take. Definitely. And that's what we want to do, not just to help young people get a job, mm -hmm. but to get something you're going to want to do and be passionate about for decades to come. Exactly. Um, you're going to have tangible skills mm -hmm. and we want to help you develop those. That's awesome. What well, what would you say it's um I guess two or three highlights that separate and that stands out the exercise science program at Life University versus at another institution? Well you, it's a good question, eh? <laughs> you get to work with Dr. Rao. <laughs> like, there you go. Um you get to work with proficient chiropractors mm -hmm. who understand vitalism. It, it's a different approach. Mm -hmm. Um, perhaps than you'd see in other exercise science programs where we're really cognizant of eight spheres of wellness. We try and educate on different ways to take care of self, to identify yourself. Mm. So then you can make, you're still going to make mistakes, but you can make smaller mistakes or at least you could have more direction in finding what you're going to be. Mm -hmm. um, whether that is a chiropractor, whether that's someone working in a rehab center, whether that's augmenting a strength training program to get that last little bit for some of the people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. um, some other areas that really stand out for me, that cross-discipline application. Yes. I mean, um, we just brought in uh, Kathy Tillery as one of our dietitians on campus. So she's augmenting some of the nutrition protocols for our athletes. Mm. We're getting them more calories on a daily basis than they've ever had before. Okay. Um, that's a value add. Like mm -hmm. you want to be a beast, you got to eat like a beast. So we're <laughs> giving them more fuel to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, that was something that she did. 
um, in addition to proper assessments using our testing lab. Mm -hmm. I, I think that is a, a hidden gem, mm -hmm. whether it's the VOD pod, whether we're doing VO2 max testing, um, whether you, we're using the DEXA, we can try and highlight some issues that might arise. If you have poor bone density, mm -hmm. if you have a compromised cardiovascular system because you had a really rough bout with COVID, mm -hmm. like, let's bring you along the right way safely because you're going to have to exercise for the rest of your life. Right. Let's do it safely and use what the ACSM says is proper guidelines, what some other public health recommendations are, as opposed to just throwing you to the wolves. Let's do it in a smart and scientific way. That's amazing. That's so our lab is, is pretty dope. Yeah, the lab is always one of the highlights for me when I'm walking through the Sports Hall Science Building. It always has been. When I was here as a, as a student, um, I had the opportunity through the Student Ambassador um, Organization to take prospective students and people that were just interested in the university into the lab. And a lot of the times you were the person that was there kind of explaining all the things in the lab. And that always blew my mind that we had all this beautiful equipment for students to use, for research to develop, and for also outside sources that are being treated or or just evaluated. That was a big investment mm -hmm. that the university made for that equipment. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking with Dr. Kovacs today, one of our master's instructors. Mm -hmm. um, and he was trying to come up with ways that we can make even better use of that, those devices and how we can offer more for our community as well as uh, the students who are here. Um, it's not technically our department. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool that we have the seniors on campus. Mm -hmm. They're downstairs in our fitness center, just below the sports house science lab. So it's fun to see those individuals as committed as they are to have some of our exercise science students go into the fitness center and teach chair yoga and modified um, mobility routines. So mm -hmm. it's appropriate for that demographic. Mm -hmm. I think it offers our, our current beast mode students, you know, the guys with like <laughs> tank tops on all the time, like <laughs> it offers them some perspective. Yeah. Like, this is a lifelong game you're playing here. Right. So get fit, get strong now, and then maintain it for decades to come. That, that, that's not our department, but it's a good thing to have. Absolutely. A robust fitness center like that. Absolutely. It's definitely um, an important piece of living, period. Movement is life. Mm -hmm. And I tell that to my patients all the time. And I love having cohorts that we can we can exchange the same train of thought. And I love that to an extent we are in a society that is kind of movement, at least in social media. It's it's more trendy to, hey, get up and move, right? Let's 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 walk away from that sedentary lifestyle. And it's nice that in this institution we have those resources to allow people to adapt to those certain movements because everybody could move, but we do have some some um, individuals that have to move a little bit different than others, right? Being cognizant. I mean, your grandma should deadlift. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but if she hasn't deadlifted in 30, 40, 50 years, like we have to change up the protocol a little bit exactly. until she can adapt appropriately because you don't want a weak grandma, right? <laughs> Nobody does. The that. point you made, objects in motion will stay in motion. Mm -hmm. And those individuals are seniors. Um, it, it offers like, the athletes who think they're too sore and tired to do anything, it was like, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> All of a sudden, I realized, like, I got it pretty good. Yeah. Um, it's important to, to take that, that perspective uh, awesome. or that other vantage point sometimes. That's awesome. Well, thank you, JP, for being here today. Thank you for being such a great resource for all of our students. Thank you for always saying yes to our crazy projects. Uh, <laughs> they're blessing. Really <laughs> this this institution is a blessing in my life, so it, it doesn't – um, belabor me at all. That's you know, awesome. we're, we're giving, doing, loving, and serving. So this is fun stuff. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, a beautiful, you. amazing um, quarter. And thank you guys for being with us one more episode. And we hope to see you on the next one. Have a beautiful day. Bye. Be well.